All right, I'm the Flat Rate Master, and we're going to talk about tools to find head gasket failures. Now, when I'm talking head gasket failures, I'm talking combustion gases into the cooling system, you know, those kind of head gasket failures, not oil leakage or, you know, combustion to combustion failures. I'm talking combustion gases into the cooling system and vice versa. Lots of methods. We're going to go over a bunch of them. The first method is going to be the least accurate. No matter what you think, it is the least accurate. And that is going to be the old suck and squeeze. The, in case you don't know what this is, this is a, what's called a combustion leak tester. And it is a two compartment suck ball. And you put a fluid in it that detects CO2. You suck air, not coolant, coolant, who values the test. So you have to make sure you don't suck coolant into the tester. But when you suck air out of the cooling system into it, if there is CO2 detected, it changes color either to green or yellow, depending on gas or diesel. But it is also one of the least effective methods because you have to understand, just because it passes that test, does not mean you do not have a blown head gasket. Lots of things can affect that tester. The amount of CO2. For instance, they blew all their coolant out driving on the highway and decided to top it off. Or they took it to a shop and they repaired the uh, leaking radiator and it's still overheating and they bring it to you the cooling system is all new and fresh and hasn't had enough time to get enough CO2 in there to change the color. So it's not the most effective method. So let's talk more advanced methods. Now the next one up is going to usually involve a good bit of time. It can involve letting the car sit. And that is taking a pressure tester, putting pressure on the cooling system, removing the spark plugs, a lot easier on a four cylinder or six cylinder that you can get to everything, but you basically pressurize the system and you take a borescope. You look for coolant dripping into the cylinders. You can also look for very clean spots because the thing about coolant entering a combustion system is it tends to steam clean. So you'll have very clean parts of either the piston or the head where that head gasket has failed. It's a good method to physically see a head gasket failure. One caveat of it is that it takes time, especially if you can't find any evidence of steam cleaning and you're, or you want to prove that it actually has a physical leak into the, one of the cylinders, then you got to wait for it to drip. It just takes time. All right, the next method we're gonna talk about is a pulse sensor. Now what you do is you adapt it to the cooling system and you hook it to your scope. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna watch for pulses in the cooling system. What happens is anytime a cylinder with a combustion leak fires, it's gonna send a pulse into the cooling system. So you can immediately tell you have a blown head gasket. It is a very cool method, works really well, and if it, you get a pulse, you know you have a head gasket failure. Quick caveat about that is head gaskets can also work like one-way valves. So sometimes, because the combustion gases will seal a head gasket, you won't have those pulses, but the method with the borescope will usually find those because, well, guess what? It works as a, a valve, so when compression's on, it seals, but then once everything cools down, or when the head cools down and things retract, it'll start leaking into the combustion gases. So when you have a vehicle with mystery coolant loss, the borescope method is usually way more effective because, well, head gaskets can work as one-way valves, trust me. I have seen it many times. Cold startup misfires, goes away as soon as it gets a little heat in it. But all, you always get that uh, mystery coolant loss, and then all of a sudden you look at a cylinder and you see it's steam cleaned 
or you see coolant just dripping out. But this is a great way to find out if you do have a combustion leak into the cooling system versus a actual just leak. So this one's from Jarhead Diagnostics, by the way. There's a lot of pulse sensors out there, but that one's mine. <laughs> I don't have any captures because the hard drive on my PicoScope laptop decided to, well, crap the bed, so I have an SSD in there now, but all my files got corrupted, so. But you take that, you watch for spikes. And now the last method we're gonna talk about is, well, gonna be the hardest for most people to do. And that is using a five gas analyzer. Most shops don't have one. We don't have one. I've never owned one. They're usually pretty dang expensive. But they are very accurate at, well, finding combustion gases. So if you find any combustion gases in your cooling system, guess what? You have a head gasket leak. All right, quick little tip on using the combustion leak tester or even a five gas analyzer. Get yourself a spill-free funnel. You know, you can get these in many brands. Make sure it has a lid, then cut you a hole in it that's just enough for that. Then you have a nice little reservoir of air to test. Because you can build up most of the pressure in here. Suck, suck, suck. Boom. Also works for with a uh, five gas analyzer for the same reason. Because you get a nice little volume of air in here and you can test that air and you don't have to worry about contaminating your five gas analyzer sensor, really expensive to fix, or messing up the fluid in a combustion tester. So, hope you found this helpful. As always, thanks for watching. I am the Flat Rate Master.